Well, joining me now is Hossam El Hamalawi, a blogger and political activist in Cairo. He says he was detained and tortured by security forces during Mubarak's presidency and subsequently helped organize protests that ousted the former leader. Uh, Hossam, um, all three judges uh, and the state prosecutor uh, were interestingly appointed uh, by Mubarak. How skeptical are you uh, about this trial? Will justice be delivered, do you think? Um, there is no doubt that the Mubarak's regime is still alive and well and that the public prosecutor um, who we have today is the Mubarak's appointed one and he's the one who came to the state's defense before, who prosecuted activists before. And today, by miracle, he is prosecuting our former president. If that tells us one thing, it tells us that it's only street pressure that the language uh, uh, that any regime in the world understands. This is a political trial, not a legal trial or an ordinary trial. And it would not have happened without our continuous protests in the streets in Cairo and elsewhere. And I think the outcome of this trial will also depend on how much public pressure is being exerted vis-a-vis -vis those who want Mubarak to actually get away with his crimes and that would include his own military junta, as well as the Arab Gulf countries and uh, his former U.S. backers. Uh, Hossam, stay with us for a minute, won't you? Because I want to uh, show some of our viewers uh, the sort of layout of the courtroom, because with so many players involved in the trial, it's very difficult to keep track. And here's a quick look uh, at who's who in the courtroom. Up in the front there, the lawyers representing victims made their claims uh, for damages on Wednesday. Behind them, uh, and kept farthest from the proceedings, are a few of the victims' families and journalists. And families of the defendants were also allowed into the courtroom, but were sat behind a fence. Well, here is the defendant's cage, that iron cage we saw earlier. Starting from the left, our former president, Hosni Mubarak, on a stretcher, uh, his sons, Allah and Gamal, uh, the ex-minister of the interior, of course, Habib El Adli, and six senior police officers. And presiding over the court is a panel of three judges who, as you were saying there, responsible for managing the trial. All three judges and the state prosecutor were appointed by Mubarak. Hossam, let's just come back to you uh, for a second. I mean, how shocked uh, were ordinary people on the streets at actually seeing Hosni Mubarak on that stretcher in the courtroom behind bars? I mean, this was once a very powerful man, uh, now reduced to looking pretty pitiful. When I became politically active, uh, when I was a university student around the year 1996, we could hardly mention Mubarak's name in public, let alone crack political jokes over the phone. If you had organized a protest against Mubarak and you chanted against him and you mentioned him in name, you used to leave your home and go into hiding for a week, uh, at least after that. So from these days to today, where we see our former dictator in a cage, humiliated, and, um, uh, and being tried as a criminal, it is indeed very heartwarming, I have to admit, for people like myself and for millions of other Egyptians who also suffered uh, under this dictatorship. Now, I am sure you will find some people, including uh, a number of those who appeared in your previous report expressing sympathy to the president. But remember, sir, we are a nation of at least 85 million people. If you find a handful of people who might have sympathy for the former dictator, I mean, that's normal, but that's not representative at all. Okay, Hossam El Hamalawi there in Cairo. Hossam, thank you very much.